auditory evoked potentials are another form of objective test, just like OEEs, the subject does not actively participate in this test. The way sounds are processed is they come in through the ear, the cochlea, and then they go up the auditory nerve. And there are these series of like way stations or neurons where sounds is processed and shared and processed and shared all the way up to the auditory cortex. And because of this, we can, these this electrical activity is what we measure on the brain as the auditory evoked potential. And it's objective measure of the hearing sensitivity of the auditory nerve and the pathways up to the auditory uh, cortex. So the electrical responses are recorded from the scalp using surface electrodes, and it's known as auditory evoked potentials. The brain stem is connected to the auditory cortex through a series of way stations within the central nervous system, like I described, so the signal is presented to the ear and there is an electrical response from the cochlea and then the signal is propagated or sent up through the auditory pathway. Time elapses during this propagation of the sound. So the signal, the electrical impulses, we can measure their latency or their time as they travel up the auditory pathway and the amplitude or the strength of the magnitude of these responses. So we look at the latency and the amplitude. The early auditory evoked potentials occur in the first 0 to 10 or 15 milliseconds, and they're thought to originate in the 8th cranial nerve. And that's the auditory brainstem response. That's what we call the ABR. And that's what we use most often. In, well, that is what we use in audiology, the ABR. We look at the first waves in the, from the 8th cranial nerve. The auditory brainstem response for the ABR is the first 10 to 15 milliseconds after the signal is presented to the ear. ABRs originate in the 8th cranial nerve and the brainstem, and they occur early after the stimulus presentation. Now beyond the ABR, we have the auditory middle latency response, which is in the 15 to 60 milliseconds. This originates in the midbrain. The auditory late response, 75 to 200 milliseconds, and then the auditory event related response to P300 from 220 to 600 milliseconds. So those auditory evoked responses or the responses beyond the auditory brainstem response, the ABR, the one that occurs in the first 10 to 15 milliseconds, aren't as important clinically. These responses are done more in research, that P300 and the auditory late responses. So there are lots of electrical events happening on the scalp, but we use EEGs to pick up and amplify the electrical response in, of the sound and to take away the noise. So the EEG is used to pick up and amplify electrical activity from the brain by the electrodes placed on the scalp. When changes in the activity are observed in the waveforms, the waveforms may be seen. And this helps in the diagnosis of central nervous system diseases or abnormalities. So audiology is the only people that use EEGs on the responses, EEG responses on the brain. They don't hurt. You just put these surface electrodes on so you don't, you don't feel anything. And they record the electrical responses and they take away, you do a bunch of averages to get rid of the brain activity. That's how the brain activity gets canceled out. You do a lot of averages.